The question today is, is this important or isn't this important in reselling? Hey, it's done. Today I wanted to talk about interaction, specifically emails and things like that with buyers or potential buyers. Now this conversation comes up fairly often because there's a good chunk of resellers who don't feel the need to respond to questions on items in their store. I hear this quite often that a lot of people feel that it's a waste of their time. They ask a lot of stupid questions and then they never answer, they never buy, they never make an offer at the end of the day. Now that's not my take on that. I feel that any personal contact with someone in an online platform like this can lead to return customers more so than anything else. With the brick and mortar, you can see somebody face to face. If somebody's just looking at your store and you have no contact, no conversation, no nothing, now many times there's no need for that buyer to associate you with anything else in the future because again, they're just buying some random item from some random seller. So what I personally feel is a good play is answer every single email question that you get on every single item. I also use the option to post that answer to that listing. There's an option. When you respond to someone's question, there's a little radio button at the bottom there on the left that if you click it, you can post the response into that listing. And I always recommend doing that. That will solve somebody else asking the very same question because it will be right there. Now, don't do that if there's some personal information in that response, like his name or something like that, because you can't post that kind of information. So just FYI, that's another option you have there. I personally feel that the most contact you have with anybody potentially looking or thinking about buying your items is better. Just like offers to watchers. If you're doing an offer to a watcher, put a contact in there. Put some information. Tell them you'll be happy to work with them. Tell them you get new stuff all the time. Tell them thanks for looking and thanks for watching the item. Here's a special offer. Do something personal. I handle all sales with utmost urgency and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That could be your, your line in there. Now, many times this will go hand in hand with offers to watchers, the questions that you get in. You can return an answer with an offer to someone when they ask you a question about that specific item. So you can respond to that person with the answer as well as an offer on that item. That really puts it out there that you're interested, you're interested in them, you're willing to make a deal with them, you want them to know the information. Those are key things that you should be doing. The time it takes you to respond to those is actually important as well. If you don't respond to somebody right away, goes by a day or two and it's something they really wanted, they may have found it by another dealer and bought it from them instead of you because they responded or they had the information they were looking for. Now, I don't sell every item I answer a question to, but it's probably 35 or 40% on average. When I answer a question, the item does sell. They really want to know something about those items. So I take it as every personal contact I can make like that, the better. Or any of those other aspects that can help your business, you've got to be able to follow up in some cases. So if they bought from you, the item arrived, just say, hey, just hoping you like the item. I see it arrived. Hope everything was okay. Here to help if you have any other issues or something along that line. Letting them know after the fact. And if you don't have a bunch of customers, these little tiny touches are allowed by eBay. Don't ask for feedback, though. Just literally make sure that the issue is okay, that the item is okay, that they're happy with it. That's all I say. I, I don't ask for feedback, and I never recommend anybody asking for feedback because in some cases that can tick somebody off. And I've seen many, many, many examples where somebody's asked for feedback and they got a negative for bugging them on feedback. So, again, as important as feedback is, in my opinion, I don't ask for it, nor do I recommend anybody doing it. I know I've got a lot of feedback, but even when I didn't have a lot, I have never in my life asked anybody to rate me or anything with feedback on my store. It's just something in my personal opinion, not a, a, a professional standard to be reaching out for people to do it. If somebody likes your service, they'll want to go above and beyond and leave good feedback, hopefully. If somebody does an excellent job for me, I'm out in a restaurant or something, and there's a manager there, I'll usually tell them, hey, she did an excellent job at the restaurant, or he was great, or whatever the case may be. Because it's good to hear compliments sometimes 
when somebody does something good. Let's look at just a few other aspects of contact, of interaction with potential buyers on eBay right now. Now I shut myself off here so we can just do a full page. So you can see everything on this page. This is my store here. This is a summary of manage my store. Literally, if you're going to your store, you can go to my store, manage my store, and this is the page that you get. Now, there are options in here where you can actually interact with people that subscribe to your store and get mailings and things like that as well. Now, they used to have an option here for promotional flyer. I believe I heard it's going away or maybe it's being moved. But if you click on this link, it does nothing. It takes you nowhere at all. I've tried it, I don't know how many times, for several days. So no big deal. It's not something I personally use, but it was a service where you could set up a flyer of your items. You could print it off at your house and send that flyer in with your merchandise that you're mailing out that someone purchased from you. Now, there's a couple things in here that will really help with some engagement where you can specifically do some things that the potential buyer will see that's specifically done by you. Another option here is to write a guide about areas that you're in. So when a guide pops up, someone wants to know something about a general field, they can look for these guides and they will see you and see that you sell or that you're in that line of field about the guide that you're talking about. So that's another option there, just FYI. And I know people who have 10 or 15 different guides that they have done. So Works for some people, it depends on the niche or the guide that you would want to write. There's a ton of guides out there in some categories, and they're just flooded with guides. So it used to be a bigger push for some people in my mind, but these days it's not as important in my book. But it is a good option for those of you who are new or want to drum up a little more business for you. Now, let me just preface any conversation here. I have a anchor store, a higher level store. This option or some of these options may not be available to the very most basic store levels. I do not know for sure. You will have to check into these aspects. But either way, if you have a premium store, anchor store, I know these are included and it is something that I constantly use all the time. Every listing that I have up uses this option here, which is listing frame. And I've already opened it here. So this is the listing frame. So what this does is it adds your personal decked out store header to every single listing you have. It will make your listings look different than any other listing out there because it will use the artwork, the general header you have for your store on every one of your listings. So they will automatically be steered towards a similarity, which is great in this type of thing. Now you can do some other things here, store logo. Now I don't have a store logo at this point. I've had one in the past, but you can set up all of these other things here that bring a, a potential buyer back around into your store. They can also sign up for newsletters, email marketing, which you can set up and type specifically personal information in there that anybody who's on the list will get. Now we'll show you that in just a minute here as well, because that is another option to get in touch with those who are watching or potential buyers of your items. Markdown Manager, we've talked about as well. There are some other things that you can click on through here, but the key one, as I said, is that there is also a section where you can create a custom message for your buyers in some of these as well too. So you can type something in there. You can type all types of different things. You can use one of these standardized headers as well too. You can also include links automatically in this template, this form for all of your listings that have specific categories in them at any given time. So they'll automatically always see your top selling items if that's what you wanna pick. You're limited to five links, but it works great. So this is another option you can do and something that I would recommend because it will help you stand out from everybody else. It'll show your specific designs on that page. Now, as I said, store email marketing. So we'll go to this link. And as I said, I've got this one opened as well. And here is my store 
email marketing summary. And from here, you can create emails, which I'll show you in a minute. I've opened up that as well. Every Friday, I have a weekly one that goes out. You can do all sorts of different things to these. Usually, I just state that these are the new items that I just list. So Friday evening, every week, a list of items that I just listed in the week can go out to some people. Now, it doesn't include everything. You can set up specifics, what's shown, what's not shown. You can suspend these. You can hold them off or whatever you want to do. You can see I've got a bunch sent out. Not everybody gets the email notice. Not everybody who gets it even realizes they're getting it anymore, so it's not read as much. But it is a way to get a good 10 or 15% of those who do uh, subscribe to you to get them to respond or look at your new items. This means they're looking at them off of eBay, and they can use a link that will bring them right up to those items on the site as well. So again, there's many different options. Just like when a potential buyer watches your item or has a, a search save. So you can save a specific search term and it will give you results even when you're not on and say, hey, these items are now up for sale on eBay and you'll get a notice of those. Now, again, this is a year ago, so my numbers are, are much different, much higher than they were back then. And there's many different ways you can mess around and get some more of these sent up. But even though it's only a handful of these that were sent out, it does drum up hundreds of dollars in sales for us. Now, don't write it off because it's only a handful of people. It only takes one to get some good sales out of a person. If you continually list the same type of items or vintage specific types of things, they may follow you either way, and this may not be as important. But every single little step you do is helpful. This is also action and shows movement on your account. So eBay's logarithm will see these sorts of things too. Emails were looked at, emails were this. There's interest drummed up with this. Now, another aspect of this is you have a subscriber list. You can see all of the users that are subscribed to your store. You can see them by name. Now, I'm not going to show you those subscribed to my store, but the point of it is you can send targeted emails to some of these folks and ask if there's anything they're interested in as they are subscribed to your interest. You can do things along that line. You can add comments to your emails to state, hey, if there's something you're looking for, please reach out because I have a wide range of items that aren't listed yet and I would be happy to list new items specifically for you. You could go through the list at the bottom or you can add it to your emails, but as much contact as you can get with a potential buyer, the better off you will be. Every little greet, every little meet will help them remember who you were. They will know your name possibly, they will know things you sell and things like that. Being personable and outreaching to folks is a good way to get sales. If you followed my channel for any length of time, you know I put things at the end of every video, clips, commercials, and such forth like that. A lot of them geared towards customer service and how much that can do for your business, like the shoplifting videos that have been going up in the last few videos. Again, at the very end of every one of my videos, after the credits, there is always, and has been for like a year, clips at the end of those. So if you're missing out on those, there's some good tidbit of information in there and many of them. But the key information is that customer service will help you gain sales right off the bat every little interaction you do will also show that you're interacting with your customer base to eBay and the logarithm should help you as well so interaction is key just like anything else now let's just look at one last aspect of it which is the email marketing section itself you can create a template and you can add specifics to some of these as well you can preview continue you can pick out the layout you want want and the whole works. I would honestly recommend setting all of this stuff up here as well. It's helpful. A couple hundred people have the potential to see items, depending obviously on how many watchers you have, how many people are subscribed to you. But this as well as all the other options we've talked about are good pluses to help increase your sales. Again, answering every single question with a thoughtful, courteous response offering more knowledge, offering more items that you could put up for them. Anything like that will help boost your store sales. We're not in a brick and mortar world anymore. You have to stand out as best you can online. And the only real way other than super feedback, super images and things is to reach out and contact those folks who are interested in your items and let them know that you are there to help. 
if they get good service and they have some sort of personal connection with you, like a first name at the very, very least, it will help them associate good sales, your name and you and your store with specific items that they'll always come back for. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Asking this question is courteous. It also deters a shoplifter. Valuable items should be displayed out of reach. Stacks of merchandise left in stairwells, freight elevators, halls, and in the shopping area are easy prey for shoplifters. After restocking departments, all merchandise should be returned immediately to the stockroom. This is a popular trick for stealing popular records. You can lose hundreds of records and other items to the magazine fan. Or you can save hundreds of records by putting them out of reach, behind glass as this security conscious department store did. <laughs>